if you're missing some Amazon packages, I think I found them. It's 10,000 shipping containers. You can't even begin to imagine how big that is. That barge draws a minimum of 45 feet of depth for water. It's sitting in about 17 to 23, and I'm no professional mathematician or anything, but that's a problem. A thousand ninety-five feet long. The bigger question is how did that become a problem? He didn't miss by a little bit. He's way out of the channel. If you don't know what a channel is, it's an area where they dig, typically dredge or dig an area in like a, a bay like this so that all the ships can get through there and they have plenty of depth of water because ships require a certain depth of water in order to be able to move. Well, this isn't the Ever Given, and this isn't the Suez Canal, and this ship isn't blocking $10 million of trade in a day. However, the Ever Forward is stuck in the mud. It's in much deeper mud than the Ever Given was. If you're trying to navigate a boat of this size through the Chesapeake Bay, you have to be particularly careful in this area. The shipping channel is around 700 feet wide in the southern areas. I think it gets a little skinnier in the northern areas, especially where this ship was. They regularly dredge and dig out the channel to keep it to a depth of about 50 to 52 feet. They do this because this is the type of ship they designed the channel to be able to accommodate. One thing's for sure, it's definitely increased Maryland's tourism. Many people are looking for vantage points to see the ship. This boat's getting close to the limits of the channel if it had been operating in the channel like it should have been. This boat needs about 43 feet of water in order to safely operate. The original concern was how fast they could get this ship unstuck to prevent any further delay of these packages. And so they've been dredging around the boat, but they're realizing how tall the task is to actually get this boat afloat again. Chesapeake Bay is a pretty big bay. It has a it has a pretty, you know, significant channel. Uh, I think it's down, at, you know, at least 50 feet. And, uh, you know, it's fairly wide because it's used to getting massive boats like that, cruise ships. It gets a lot of that kind of traffic. And with the, the problems on the West Coast, we're even seeing increased traffic uh, as far as, you know, barges and boats up the Chesapeake Bay uh, from, you know, manufacturers and suppliers trying to uh, offset the problems they're having on the West Coast with not being able to get any of these, these barges into port. It's 10,000 shipping containers. You can't even begin to imagine how big that is. It's just a little boat from here because it's so far away, but 10,000 tractor trailer bodies. And he's going through 20 feet of water. They're never gonna be able to get that thing uh, out of that spot until they completely unload it, take all the fuel out of it, get all the weight they can possibly get off of it, and then probably go dredge it and all kinds. This is gonna cost so much money. I'd hate to be the captain of that boat. I really would. He was at Baltimore and he was coming back out to sea. And this is like, you know, this is the most risky spot. Like this is, this is where you can have your problems. You know, it's one thing to kind of be off track when you're out in the middle of the ocean and you're in you know, hundreds of feet of water, but you know, you're in a very limited amount of water in a limited size canal. I, I can't wait to see what the rest of this story is because like I said, I wouldn't want to be the guy in charge of that boat. But slowly the concern has transitioned into a structural issue for the boat. Since it's stuck in such shallow water, during low tides, there's a lot of stress being put on the frame of the boat. They're worried that cracks or damage could develop, which would leak a lot of diesel fuel into an already unstable Chesapeake Bay. It's an absolutely beautiful area. And the residents have been working really hard on trying to clean up the waters. It'd be an absolute catastrophe if this boat were to spill its diesel fuel into the Chesapeake Bay. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below.